And I start, I laugh, and I'm like, Josh, you ate mushrooms. It's impossible. It's impossible for you to die. Like you can't die from mushrooms. Like, cause I was feeling like I was about to start dying. Well, as soon as I said that, in all my pride and arrogance saying that, I turned around and I heard God say, who says I can't stop your heart whenever I want? And it was like, boom. All of a sudden it was like, the evil just filled the room. I started praying. I instantly knew, like, and we're an hour into this thing, and I instantly knew this thing just started. Like this party just started and I made a huge mistake. Well, Joshua, welcome back to Delafe Testimonies. We are so grateful to have you back. The first testimony that we recorded impacted a lot of people, and we're just so grateful that you you are back. Before we continue to this next testimony that, that you wanted to share with the people, could you just very briefly share your salvation testimony for those who maybe don't know who you are, who haven't seen the first video? How did you come to surrender your life to Jesus? Well, my name is Josh, I'm 29. And, uh, you know, my, my testimony was essentially, you know, I had mental illness and addiction from a very young age, around 12 years old, it, it started. And, and so I was on a 12, you know, 12, 15 year journey of, of drug, uh, drug addiction, uh, mental illness, going in and out of jails and rehabs and, and uh, psych wards even. And around 2017, it all kind of came crashing down. I found myself homeless and, and at a bottom of bottoms. And I was crying out to Jesus and essentially ended up in jail and having an encounter with God that just completely changed my life and just changed me as a person. And so from 2017, 2018, I've just been walking with God and, and you know, he, he restored uh, my entire life, really, of everything that I had lost through through the addictions and through all the, you know, issues. So, Yeah, well, for anybody who, who wants to see the entire testimony, the link of that testimony will be in the description down below, and it'll also be on your screen, so make sure you go and check out um, Joshua's full salvation testimony. Joshua, what is the testimony that you would like to share with us today? So the testimony I want to share today is really about me uh, taking mushrooms after I had been walking with Christ. And so to give a little context, I think I should probably give a little bit of a backstory leading up to it. I was walking with Jesus for about two and a half years at this point. Whenever I got saved, I went immediately into evangelism, uh, immediately into street evangelism and preaching the gospel. And I got consumed by it. So about two and a half years into this, of I had seen miracles. I had, you know, prophesied. I'd cast out demons. I'd, I was walking in the, the fullness of the gospel, growing in God and, and seeing things. But somewhere along the line, it starts to cost a lot. It starts to really cost you things. It started to cost jobs, friendships, relationships, uh, you know, uh, issues with family members even. Um, and the other part of it was that after talking to so many different people, it's like you you see so many different perspectives. And because of my background, I kind of, you know, came up in the new age and very open minded type of background. You you can identify and understand why people think this way. And so for me, I guess what happened was somewhere along this journey, I started to really question like. Jesus, it was like, Jesus, I know that you're real. Like, I know you're king. But how do I know that you're just my king? Or you're not just my king. How do I know that there isn't another way? Like, it, it started to feel arrogant telling people, like, no, you're wrong. Not that I say it like that, but in your heart, it's like, well, that's wrong. Jesus is the truth. If it's not Jesus, it's not right. And so I noticed that after talking to so many people, I felt like, God, I want to really be more sure about this. Like I'm I'm I was at the point where it was like I'm ready to die for this thing. And it was like are you really that that confident in this? That, like I know God showed up for me, but do I really know that I know that I know? The other aspect of it was that I would talk to people and it was like it seemed like God wasn't working for some people the way he worked for me. Like you'd meet these people like, I prayed to Jesus, I did this, I, I, you know, I called on Jesus and they're still in their struggles and God didn't like 
come do what he did for me for for other people. And so essentially what happened was I started to get frustrated with this. So my faith was getting challenged. I always say it's like it's easy to have faith when you just come to church on Sunday and just do your life. But you don't really know what kind of faith you have until you take that faith and you try to build something with it or you take that faith and you, you know, come against something with it or you you know what I mean when you when you use the shield of faith as an offensive thing is when you find out what kind of faith you have. And so when when I was constantly finding myself in these situations of trying to bring my faith into the world and I, I guess inculcate my ideas onto other people. And so basically what happened was I was online one day and I was I stumbled upon this video of talking about there was a, a sect of Christianity back in the day that did mushrooms. And it was that was deceit where it was like, I saw this, I'm like, this is crazy, this is interesting. I guess the thing about it is that mushrooms and psychedelics in my past were always something separate. Like I saw drugs as drugs and then psychedelics to me were like a medicine. And the funny thing about psychedelics is that it taught me a lot of things that are true. It taught me a lot of things about myself that are still true today. It taught me a lot of truth. But the thing about these things is that it's just enough truth to keep you going down the rabbit hole and just enough lie to keep you bound. And so it's like, I would, I would, and an example would be that I would take, you know, mushrooms or, or acid or something, and it would make me aware of where I was wrong in life, I guess you could say. Like, I would feel guilty about, like, man, I should be a better brother. I should be a better, you know, son. I should be a better employee. Like, it would, it would make me feel as if I was missing the mark. It would make me feel guilty. Uh, and then it would also share some type of, you know, universal truth to me that in hindsight, it sounded like good ideas. But what happened was I never found the power to act on those things or to follow through with the things that were being revealed to me. But either way, it had a huge impact on me. And it was always like in, in the bottom of me somewhere like I was curious about it still. Like, what if it's really not that big of a deal? What if? And so that seed was basically planted for a couple months and it was just kind of there. And I never really was like, I'm gonna act on it. But it was just kind of in my mind, just kind of, you know, subconsciously praying to God about it. And so what happened was my conversation with God about it was, it sounds crazy now when I hear myself, right? But my conversation with God was like, all right, God, this is what I'm gonna do. I was like, I'm going to take some psychedelics. And now because, like I said, I was moving in the giftings. My spiritual senses were open. So I'm like, all right, now I'm awake. I'm aware. I know the truth. So I'm going to take this stuff. I'm going to go into the spirit realm. And I'm going to find out all the lies so I can come back and tell people that are caught up in this. And that was my prayer. Like, I was like, I'm going to go in the spirit realm. I'm going to use my authority in Christ. And I'm going to tell all these beings to reveal themselves in Jesus' name and like show yourself kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like, show me the truth. And that was my heart behind it. It wasn't like I wanted to escape or get high. It was like, I just want to know more truth. I want to understand. So when I'm ministering to these people and telling them, like, no, like, you know, so I have something to stand on and why I believe what I believe. You know, I'm speaking for myself, but one thing that's bothered me is when you see people, you know, present the gospel or faith and have absolutely no understanding of anything else. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like Paul says, he became all things to all men, you know? And, and so I believe that I wanted to know why I believed what I believe. This, this went on for a couple months. And so anyways, one day I was at my friend's house and I went to this guy's house to make music. I would go there and record and then leave. But the thing is, is like he was trapping. He was selling weed, he was selling stuff. And like, and I knew that, but I would go there and just, in my mind, like I just record music and leave. And it was, you know, he was still someone I cared about a lot, someone I still have a lot of love for. but. I went over there one night, and at this point, this idea had been kind of in my my mind for a couple months. And so I go over there, and I sh he shows up, and next thing I know, he's like dumping out a whole bag of of these mushrooms on his bed. And I'm sitting there, and I'm about to record the song, and they're just like right there. And the interesting thing is that the reason I don't, you know, do heroin anymore is because uh, I got free from it. I know the death that comes with addiction. The reason I don't, you know, watch porn is because I know the the darkness that it brings. I know the effects of it. The reason I don't do certain things is because the truth has been revealed in a way where it's not appealing to me. But with the psychedelics, 
there was fear there. And I didn't like that. It was like, I wasn't doing it because I was scared, but I didn't know why. And the fact that there was fear in front of it made me want to do it because I was scared to do it. And so they were there and my stomach started kind of like, and he started telling me like, yeah, here, you know, you know, do it, just do it, you know, kind of thing, right? He, he wasn't really pressuring me, but he was laying out the little, you know, a little, you know, seed there to to get me kind of in it. And I said, yeah, I'm gonna do it. I said, now or never, right, God? I was like, you know what, let's do this thing. And so, I, you know, I ate it. It was a little, you know, eighth chocolate or whatever, and I just ate it. This wasn't my first rodeo. You know, psychedelics were a huge part of, of my past. I had experience with mushrooms, acid, DMT over a hundred times. I was very good at handling this stuff. You know, I never had a bad trip. I had taken much larger doses and been coherent. You know what I mean? I could take acid and go to work. Like I was very functional on it. I was very good at keeping my mind in check. I could be, you know, there was times I was involved with police or violent situations and I could keep my mind, you know what I mean? Like my mind was very good with dealing with psychedelics. It wasn't like this was just my first time and I know what I was getting into. Like. I had done this, you know, I, I I knew what was real. I knew what was me hallucinating. Like I knew how this all worked. And so I take them and I'm sitting there and, and I'm like, let's go. I'm giving, I'm putting myself in a positive mindset. I'm like, yeah, it's gonna be a good time. And I, you know, I start feeling this, there's like a little anxiety you start to get when you take mushrooms. Like you start feeling them kind of, it's like anxious before you, you get into it. And I start feeling that and I'm like, I'm like, all right, let's just like make music. Let me get my mind off, you know, what's what this, and we're gonna get into a good mindset. And we're starting to like put on some beats. All of a sudden, my friend, this is probably about 20 minutes in, and I'm I'm feeling good, like I'm in a good mindset and everything. My friend is like, hey, uh, you want to go to the bar? These guys want to go. And I'm like, I'm looking. I'm like, no, man. Like I'm like, you think I want to go to the bar right now? Like, no, I'm staying here. So he's like. Okay, he's like, I'm gonna uh, leave then. So this is about 30, 40 minutes. He gets up and he leaves. And man, when I tell you a switch went off, a switch went off. It was like, I was watching him and all of a sudden it was like, he. I saw that I was being set up. That's how it felt. It felt like someone lured me into somewhere and was like, all right, I'm gonna go. He didn't know this, but as soon as he's like, all right, I'm gonna leave, he walked out and darkness came in. And like I said, I, my spiritual senses were very aware at this point. You know, I was very sensitive to, to you know, demonic presences and, and stuff like that. As soon as he walked out the room, it was like evil came in. And so I'm like, oh man, this is, you know, this is crazy. This is here. But I'm like, nah, I'm tripping. I'm going to have a positive mindset. I know how to handle myself. I'm good. So I'm, I'm ignoring it. I'm enjoying it. My time there, but I'm like, I should probably leave here. Well, it didn't get better. It felt like, I mean, I could individually feel each presence coming in the room. It would be like a person walking in. I'd feel darkness surrounding me. And all of a sudden, my chest started to cave. Like, it was a pressure. And I'm like, I could, like, I was having trouble breathing. But I'm like, all right, Josh, we're not doing this. You're good. So I go in the bathroom, and I'm laughing. I'm, like, cheering myself up. I'm like, you're, you know, like, this is amazing. Your life's good. You're healthy. You know, I'm, I'm telling myself all my blessings. I go in the mirror. And I start, I laugh and I'm like, Josh, you ate mushrooms. It's impossible, it's impossible for you to die. Like you can't die from mushrooms. Like, cause I was feeling like I was about to start dying. Well, as soon as I said that in all my pride and arrogance saying that, I turned around and I heard God say, who says I can't stop your heart whenever I want? And it was like, boom. All of a sudden it was like, the evil just filled the room. I started praying. I instantly knew, like, and we were an hour into this thing, and I instantly knew this thing just started. Like this party just started, and I made a huge mistake. Instantly knew like, oh my gosh, what did I do? Oh my, dude, instantly, God have mercy, God have mercy, Lord forgive me. I started praying in tongues, and it would be like, it was bad, but I would, I'd stay there. And then I noticed if I stopped, I would feel like darkness consuming me again. I'd like I'd get pressure on my chest. Like I'd feel like I was dying. Now, for for context, how long does it usually uh, a trip on mushroom? How long is it usually? A mushroom trip is usually about 
five to six hours, I would say five to seven hours, I think, depending how many you have. Yeah. Um, and like I said, this dose was in my eyes was just a regular dose. Like that was what I took. I, and I had taken much larger doses than this. So this I'm getting a circle. My very first thought once I was aware of what was happening, like I felt like I was in, encircled by by death and, you know, death ensnared me and circled me that and my first thought was, Josh, who are you going to call? You can't call a lawyer in this situation. I can't call my mommy or my daddy. I can't, you know what I mean? I can't call my past. Who am I going to call in this situation? There's no amount of money. Like I I was aware of the huge mistake that I just made. Like this wasn't, you know, some peccadillo or, or you know, little mistake. This was like, I was aware immediately you just made a huge, huge error and you're in big trouble. Like that was how I like I knew in the spirit, I just opened a door and legally gave this rights to happen right now. I, I agreed with this. Well, I'm praying and it's getting more and more intense. It's not, it's, it's getting worse and worse. And I'm feeling like, all right, I need to get out of here. And I remembered my wife was at dinner with some friends. She was coming back. So I'm like, oh, I gotta get out this atmosphere. Maybe if I leave the atmosphere, it'll start getting better. So I call, I call my wife. I'm like, you gotta come get me. By the time she gets there, about 20, 30 minutes later, I'm like in full distress. Like it was not like I all I can tell you is it just felt like darkness was just caving in on me and, and I was dying. By the time I got in the car, I couldn't breathe. My wife, she didn't know what was going on. So she's like trying to have a conversation. Like, what's going on? I'm like, Jackie, at this point, I was starting to get pulled into the spirit realm. Like I, I was leaving my body. And when, and I would just be in this void of blackness and I didn't know what was going on. All I knew was I felt like I was dying. And the only thing that would make me feel like I would live was to pray. And so I'm like, Jackie, I can't talk right now. Just pray for me. Like, you don't understand. And in the car ride, she was like, oh my gosh, are you? Cause I, w I couldn't breathe. I was like, <gasps> I was dying. I felt like I was dying. And I was like, just pray. I can't talk. Like anytime I would come into my flesh, I'd feel like I was dying. And I had to go back into the spirit. Like I'm going in and out of my body. Like I'm just like getting shot out into this like black void. And then I'm coming back in my body and feeling like I'm dying. I get back to my house and this is where everything took a turn. I get into my bedroom and I'm just on the floor. And at this point, I'm like fully just in the spirit room. I'm leaving my body and I'm just gone. And what happens is I find myself floating in this black abyss. And I didn't really know what was going on at first. And then vision started to come to it. Next thing I knew, I was in a hand. I was in this big hand, just laying there, helpless. Like I said, like I knew like there's nothing I could, no one can do anything for me. No amount of money, nothing. You are here on your own account, you're in trouble. And I said, oh my gosh. When the Bible says that to fall into the hand of the living God is a dreadful and fearful thing, it's not a joke. It was like fear is not an accurate word for how I felt. It was just such a degree of helplessness that I can't explain it. it. Fear is not the right word, but I'm in this hand. And all of a sudden on my right hand, I just see like 20, 30 demons. And on my left, it was like the kingdom of heaven. I can't explain it. The kingdom was was almost veiled in a sense. It was like if you put like a real thin white sheet over something, you could still see what everything is, but the fullness of its glory wasn't revealed. I'm in a hand in the middle of this abyss. And I knew hell was under me. It was just a dark abyss of blackness, but I knew if I got dropped, like I was done. All these demons are on my right side and they step like they're speaking to heaven. I'm in the middle, like in the hand, like, oh my gosh. And they said, this one that was like bigger than the other one stood up and he said, we're tired of this kid. They said, he keeps coming to our kingdom and taking people out. And then he came back and ate off our table. Once he said that, it was like everything hit me. Like the fullness of my mistake was like, oh my gosh, what did you do? And then at that point, it was like, I'm still not, being able to breathe. I'm still not being like, I'm in full blown fear. Now I'm seeing this stuff happen right in front of my eyes. I can't breathe. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, please have mercy. Please have mercy. And see what, what was happening was like, if I came back to, to my body, it would feel like I was dying. And I knew I had to go back and like intercede for myself in the spirit. And it was like, 
I'm telling my wife because she keeps trying to have a conversation like what's going on talk to me and I'm like you don't understand like I can't I can't be in here right now I have to go back like I couldn't be in in the world like in my flesh I told my wife I'm like you don't understand what's happening right now just intercede for me please like I'm, I'm trying to explain what's happening but I can't really I can't talk I'm, I, I couldn't breathe and so I'm in this situation for a while I don't know how long but for a good amount of time, it's like they're having conversations that I can't hear. There was a court, I was in like the courts of heaven. Like there was a court case happening and I'm getting persecuted by, by the devil. I can't hear what's going on. And all I know is I'm terrified. I could feel my organs shriveling up. I could feel myself, life just fully leaving my body. Like I knew that no matter how much water I drank, I would still be thirsty. I knew that if I got dropped from this hand, that these demons were gonna like take me or I was just gonna drop into an abyss of hell or something. Like, I wish I could find the words for how helpless I felt. Like I was in a hand and knew that there was nothing I could do and that these demons were coming to get me. Like they they were like, this kid invited us here. He, he broke a law and like this was a, a major infraction and we're, we're coming to get justice on this. That's how it felt. And and so I feel my body like dying. And the other thing was that fighting was tiring. So I'm like in this hand, I'm pleading out to God, like, God have mercy, God forgive me. Like what, like, I'm sorry. But I was so exhausted. Like it, I, I can't really explain it. There's a Psalm that says in your hand, I've been spent. And that's how I felt. I was completely like void of energy. And, I'm, and so at one point after like an hour or two of this, I said, God, you know what? I believe you're just. I said, Jesus, I made a big mistake, but you're my Lord, my savior. I said, I give up, I surrender to your hand. And I went limp and I started feeling myself dying. Like it was, I started feeling myself fully passing over and my physical body start dying. And then something in me told me like, no, you keep fighting. Like you have to, you have to, you have to keep fighting. So I'm like, <gasps> and this is the other thing is that God literally hands you every breath you have. No joke intentionally hands you by mercy every hand you get. So I'm in this hand, I'm dead. I have nothing to, I'm just empty, dead. And I started seeing breath like come to me. I don't know how to explain it except I knew where God was and he was started sending me breath because I would I couldn't breathe and I'd look over and see like breath coming to me and I'd go <gasps> and then I and then it would be like a minute before I got another breath and I started feeling breaths come to me <gasps> and I and I oh, could breathe again and then I'd be like suffocating shriveling up dying and then I'd get a breath again and so this goes on for a while and then I said it wasn't like releasing though like it wasn't getting better I'm just fighting then all of a sudden I said I need to be here for my family I said, like, I don't know what to do. I've cried out for mercy. I said, God, I, I need to be here for my family and for like every person in my life that you've called me to like help. Forget about me. I need to. As soon as I started saying that, I started feeling the pressure of like death start to release me. And at that moment, a cloud of witnesses came around me, like six or seven like saints, angels like came around me and they started praying for me. And I started feeling like, hope like because at this up until this point i felt hopeless dead terrified i started feeling like hope and life come back into me and all of a sudden it was like a shadow of a cross came in into like the attention of everything like every i was aware like there was angels and beings in this in the kingdom of god and then there was all these demons and it was a kingdom of darkness and i'm in the middle of it all all of a sudden everything's attention even like heaven's attention all turned and it was a sh and it was a shadow of a cross and at that moment god like turned to the cross and it was like he remembered at that moment i started feeling everything leave and all of a sudden i look over and jesus starts walking out of the kingdom of heaven he walks up to me puts his arm around me and says this one is mine he belongs to me he said everything obeyed, everything listened. He spoke to everything. He said, this one's mine, he belongs to me. We turned, I end up back in my body and I start going through deliverance. I mean, like I puked my guts out. Like I filled up three tra uh, plastic bag, grocery bags, just puking my guts out, like it hurt. It, fit, it was like pulling my very insides out, kind of throw up. And I start puking, puking, puking and collapsed like I, like every ounce of energy and strength I had was gone. 
then I find myself back in the spirit. And this is where everything shifted into, I'm in heaven now. Like I was, and still the, the fullness of the glory of heaven was still concealed, but I could still see everything. It was just not in its fullness of glory. It was like maybe half of it, I don't know. I walk in, the first thing I see, I'm back out of my body, I look, and Jesus is in front of me, and he says, maybe we shouldn't do that again. Bro, he smiled at me. When people talk about the goodness of God, it's like, it is crazy. Bro, he acted like it didn't even, what just happened didn't happen. That's how he, he looked at me as if he was happy to see me, as if he was proud of me. His eyes were love, and he literally smiled and said, maybe we shouldn't do that again. He wasn't saying maybe we, because he was you know, supportive of what I did. He was letting me know that even through that, I was with you. Mm. Even through that, all your bad choices, I'm with you. And I said, oh my gosh. The second thing I noticed was that heaven was, like heaven, the, the, the host of heaven were disappointed with me. Bro, I felt so much shame. I felt so much condemnation. Like I, Jesus is walking around with me like he's proud of me. Like this is my son, everybody. But I'm noticing that like people are like, it was like angels were shaking their head like this kid. And I started feeling so much shame. Then all of a sudden, boom, Psalm 73, 25 comes to me. For whom do I have in heaven besides you? And who do I desire on earth more than you? When my heart and my flesh fail me, you're my portion, my strength forever. I said, oh my gosh, that's what that... Who do I have in heaven besides you? Jesus is all we have in heaven and all we need in heaven. So I'm like, oh my gosh, that's what this means. Like, I really don't, like, heaven has Jesus back. They don't have my back, but because they have Jesus back, they have my back. Like, And so this is clicking. But the thing was, is where I was in heaven, it was like, there was different dimensions and they were separated by like a veil. And it was almost like a, a tower of like there were higher levels of glory. And where we where I entered in, it was kind of high up. Like there was, I knew there was like maybe one or two levels above me. But where he brought me, I, I was like, this is I don't deserve to be here. Mm -hmm. And all I, I was thinking, I couldn't stop thinking about what had just happened. And I said, I don't deserve to be here. I said, God, just let me worship. I said, please don't make me talk, just let me worship. And I shot back down like to the lowest heaven. Like I turned and like shot off to the very bottom of the bottom I could find in heaven. And I was at the bottom of everything, just on my hands and knees, just worshiping God. And all I could say was hallelujah, hallelujah. I, like I was scared to stop saying hallelujah because I'm realizing every breath I get right now is from God. It needs to be used to glorify God. Wow. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And I remember saying, Jesus, please don't ever make me speak again. Please don't. And I'm thinking, preach the gospel. Like I am, I will never preach the gospel again because I'm literally, this is what I'm representing and I'm so unworthy. Like that's what I'm thinking. Like I said, please don't ever let me preach again. Just let me worship. That was what I kept saying to myself. And some time went by and Jesus like came back to me. He came down to wherever I was and he was, and everything in the spirit, you speak telepathically, like all this stuff, you just know. Intuition's on point, you're, you just know what people, like it, everything is, you just, is a knowing. So you're, you're still connected to the Father. Like I knew like all the, the whole time, I knew what was going on just by knowing. And Jesus basically washed that condemnation off of me and that, like he came to me and sat with me in that place. Like, I forgive you, like it's 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 done. Like, just let it go, you know, like move from now. And, and you know what I mean? Like live from this moment. And so I went back to where he originally brought me. And I remember I had more of a confidence. Like I came back and he had his arm around me again. Like he's walking me through like heaven. Like, and I remember being like, hey, he forgives me. Like, and that's what I'm like, he forgives me, he loves me. You know what I mean? Like, well, I don't know tell y'all. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so, but the thing is, is that I felt so dirty because what happened was God started to, it was everything that I wanted to know, he started to show me. It was like, then I found myself in this place of just like, almost like flying above heaven, seeing parts of it and just knowing what it was. And it was so fast and like, so uh, instantaneously that I couldn't, to, I couldn't put everything into words. It was just, I was getting flooded with information and revelation that I started to say, God, stop. 
I said, like when Paul says, there's things that are illegal for me to tell you. Like that's what I thought of. I start. It was it was killing me. I was getting filled with so much joy, so much revelation. Everything I wanted to know was just boom, being revealed. Boom, all the secrets of like earth, heaven, everything. I'm just starting to know. And I said, stop. This is killing me. It literally felt like I was gonna die if God told me one more thing. It was like my physical, like spirit body, whatever, like. I was not full spirit or something, or like, I don't know how all that worked. I couldn't contain it. It was like, this is gonna explode my body if one more revelation comes to me. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, like, I don't deserve this right now. Like, the 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 craziest part about this experience was that I knew I didn't deserve it, and I built my own Tower of Babel to get this. And God's goodness was like, this is what you wanted, right? I'm giving you what you wanted. The way you did it was wrong. But here, now, now I'm gonna give you what you were asking for. Now everything you wanna know, I'm, I'm showing you. And I'm telling him, stop. I said, I can't take it. I said, send me back to earth. I was like, oh my gosh, reality literally protects us. Like if, if, if the veil was lifted right now, people would die from fear. There'd be people surrounded by demons having no idea they're living in hell their whole life. They would die from fear. Like, I mean, it was just like, I knew that reality in this earth was keeping me from just being destroyed almost. Like, so I'm like, God, send me back to my body. Send me back to my body. Like, I can't contain this anymore. I can't, I can't stand it. And so this goes on for a while. God's revealing all this stuff to me. And most of that stuff, some of it I forgot. And then the rest of it is stuff now that's in my spirit that I don't have words for. It's stuff I know and understand that I don't know how to put into words. It's like they're... And so this goes on for a while. And then slowly I started coming back to my body like more. I started waking up and coming back to and like being able to breathe and like look at myself and and started to be able to function. It slowly just started dissipating. I mean, I, I, I came back to a place of peace and joy, rest. I mean, obviously like, I mean, my mind was completely blown. The next three days I was scared to talk. I made a vow that I was never gonna preach the gospel again, or so I thought, and, and you know, God told me like, I still want you to preach the gospel, you know what I mean? Like, I, I called you to preach the gospel. But I'm like, I'm never preaching again. I'm never speaking again. I think if there was one thing that I took away from this that experience was that just that literally every breath that we're getting right now is is God's mercy. Like he intentionally was sending me breath, bro. Like, I, that was probably the most wild thing to me. The next thing was Jesus's forgiveness and i think god knows my heart and hopefully you hear my heart when i say it. it's like jesus is weird man like he he's so weird in the way that like he's not like us at all he is he really is love like he really like looked at me and it blows my mind every time i like think about it just instantly boom i came your mind and now it's all gone like we're here i love you so after that like i came back and it was like all right, I got my answers. Like I, I understand now what that stuff is. I understand, you know what I mean. I understand. What was the answer? What did you receive? So what I received from all that is that Satan introduces himself as a being of light. So what I realized is that all those years before taking psychedelics and all that stuff, you're what you're doing is you are kicking open the door to the spirit realm. You know we got people that are just have no spirituality, especially in high school and stuff. When I was ta started taking it, like you're just taking psychedelics, having no idea what's going on. You're just taking it as a party thing. But what you're doing is like, you are just kicking the door open to the spirit realm saying, hey, what's up guys, I'm here. And the thing is, is that your spirit man isn't even built up to understand what's even happening around you. And so th the devil, he just dances around as a being of light. It's like everything you're seeing, like I had encounters with, with spirit beings before. I've gone, you know, had other dimension beings come to me. Oh, I had all, I had experienced all that. And they would teach me things that sounded good. And that's what goes back to what I was saying is that what you're experiencing on, on these psychedelics is just enough truth to keep you bound. You know what I mean? It's just enough lie to keep you bound. So it's like, you're getting stuff that's like, this is good, this is good. But boom, at the end of it, there's a hook that's going to keep you bound to something. You know what I mean? The devil, if you could get free from, from this, if as long as you're bound to something, the devil doesn't really care. As long as you're not with Jesus, the devil doesn't really care where you go. You know, it doesn't matter if your chain is 10 feet or 100 feet, you're still on a chain. And you know what I mean? And so it's like, that's what I think it revealed to me was that everything 
I had seen in my past was all a lie. It was it was eating from I guess the the tree of you know of of good and evil. And the thing is, is that God can give you these experiences. You know what I mean? And and I've had you know experiences with God the right way. The thing I notice is that with psychedelics, there's always something off with it. You always have some type of come down. You always have some type of things that there's never like with Jesus, when you have an encounter with Jesus through prayer, through fasting, through the right way, through his face, by his, you know, authority, not your own. It's clean. It's pure. It has joy. It has peace. There's nothing, no side effects. With psychedelics, there's always some side effect. You come down, you're anxious. You, you know, come into it. You got to feel sick or throw up or feel anxious. There's always some dirt to it. And that's when I look back, I notice every time I took psychedelics, there was some type of like, Ugh, like this isn't, this is dirty feeling. No matter what, no matter how good the experience was, there was always a point of this doesn't feel pure, you know? And so I think that was one of the biggest things I realized. You mentioned that uh, that that there was a a fear of psychedelics before you went into it, which is what led you to go into it because of that fear. Yeah. What happened to that fear? Oh, I fear them now. <laughs> no, I, like, <laughs> no, I don't like now. Like, I actually saw some the other day. I'm not gonna say where, but so you know, someone someone I know. I went in their medicine and I seen them, and I almost like I said, "Oh God!" I just see it as pure death. It's like, I don't fear them. I just, I learned my lesson, man. I went there, you know, and, and like I said, that's not something that's always a good thing. I'm, you know, I'm someone that learns the hard way and I'm someone that wants to experience for myself. I jumped into that thing knowing full well wasn't the best idea, but uh, now it's just, I, I, I know, like, I think I would die if I took them ever again, you know, like, like mm. it's, I'm not showing up to that courtroom in, in those circumstances ever again, you know? Yeah. How, how should we as friends, as family of, of people who maybe are taking psychedelics, how should we react to them? How should we be there for them as Christians? I think the first thing is we have to understand that people are having very, very real encounters on these things. They're very, very real experiences. And so I think the first thing is to understand, like I'll, I'll use this analogy. If somebody, if I met someone, I go to preach the gospel with somebody and I said, you know, hey, Jesus, you know, whatever, right? And they said, man, look, I don't believe that. I had I had uh, a UFO come to me and aliens come to me. Am I going to argue their experience? No, you didn't. You're wrong. It's a lot. Like a lot of times that's typically what happens is we we go, you know, from a Christian perspective and we know that it's it's a lie, but we we approach them like that's a lie. It's not true. And it's like you are telling somebody their experience and what their reality is didn't happen essentially or that, you know what I mean? And so I think the first thing is that we have to understand that these are real experiences and, and there's not a lot that you could tell somebody other than ask Jesus to to reveal the truth. Go ahead and, and take these mushrooms, sure. It, don't tell them to do that. But you know what I mean? Like, okay, go eat your mushrooms. Call on Jesus when you eat those things. Tell Jesus to show up when you eat those things. You know, ask for truth to be revealed you know what I mean? Uh, I think that there, there's not too much we can do other than to keep pointing to Jesus, keep praying for them. You know what I mean? And ask for the truth to be revealed. And, yeah. Any last words to the to the people watching? I think you've given us a lot here to to take in and, yeah. uh, and a lot of things that are, are very, I mean, it's just laid out. It's plain and simple. Any last words for the people who are watching your testimony right now? I'll say I'll say two two things to the people that are in Christ that feel any type of con condemnation shame. I want to tell you that God is way better than we know, way better than you could ever imagine. I still don't even know the the full goodness of God, but I do know that after that encounter, I learned that Jesus is never upset with me. Jesus is always speaking life. He's always speaking more. He's always speaking truth. You know, that is the foundation from which he 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 lives from. What I experienced was Zechariah 3 1. I didn't read that scripture until after. But that is literally what I, I experienced was the devil at my right hand saying, This one's guilty, and God saying, I'm not guilty. You know, I didn't get the robe and the the you know turban at that time, but that's what he he pulled me in and called me his own. Then the next thing I would say is that the new age has so many people confused. Psychedelics are becoming a bigger and bigger thing. Microdosing, ayahuasca retreats, 
And I want to tell you that those things are lies. It doesn't even make sense. There was there was a guy, I went on a clubhouse uh, room and I, I shared part of my experience. And and someone, I said, so what what is that then? And and it was a shroom room. And I just wanted to hear feedback. I already knew where I stood, but, and some guy said you had to eat more. So I said, so you're telling me that the more mushrooms I eat, the more healing I'll do. He said, yeah. And I'm like, bro, it doesn't even make sense. So you're telling me that the God of this universe put us on earth and said, hmm, the way that these humans have to contact me is they have to go eat fungus out of cow poop or grow a fungus. What if you don't have money? What if you don't have the resources? Then you can't experience God. Like, think about that. I need to have these mushrooms. I need to have this psychedelic to encounter the divine being, the creator. Like when you think about it like that, it doesn't even make sense. All these things are rabbit holes and you're never gonna land anywhere. And I noticed that people that take them never know what truth they stand on. It's always, yeah, I feel like this. Yeah, I feel like that. Um, and I'm not condemning them. Like I said, that's what led me to this experience was that you know I, I was standing in that place of not being sure. But I am pretty positive, 99.99% sure that these things are just leading you astray. These things are not the truth. And I promise you, if you call on Jesus, on one of these encounters or one of these experiences, you start calling on Jesus as Lord because Jesus is King, you'll find out. They're never going to lead you to life and they're always going to keep you ensnared. And that's pretty much it.